Hello dear students, welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's video, we are going to continue with the magnetism chapter. Now, today we are going to discuss about the 8th question. An electron is projected with uniform velocity along the axis of a current carrying long solenoid. Which of the following is true? An electron is projected with a uniform velocity uh, along the axis of a current carrying long solenoid. Which of the following is true? Electron will be acceler accelerated along the axis. Electron path uh, will be circular about the axis. That is false. Electron will experience a force at 45 degree to the axis and hence the current... Uh, hence execute a helical path that also wrong electron will continue to move with uniform velocity along the axis of the solenoid that is correct right so because uh, magnetic Lorentz force we know that f is equal to q into v cross b now it is given that it is an electron is projected uniformly along the axis of a current carrying solenoid so since it is current carrying solenoid is acting in the same direction velocity also acting in the same direction so here we will be getting it as electron is projected with a uniform velocity along the axis of the solenoid so the flow of current will be what will be the uh, force acting on it qvb sin theta since theta equals 0 qvb 0 sin 0 is 0 so force acting will be equal to 0 so b is b is parallel to b so the electron will be continuing to move there is no force acting on the system hence the electron will continue to move with uniform velocity along the axis of the solenoid so when electron is projected with the uniform velocity in the same direction of the axis itself then force acting on the system will be equal to zero hence it will be continuing to move in the same direction only next question a micro ammeter has a resistance of 100 ohm so resistance is given as 100 ohm and a full range scale 50 micro ampere uh, uh, for and a full scale range 50 micro ampere current is 50 micro ampere it can be used as a high range ammeter or voltmeter provided resistance is added to it pick the correct range of resistance of, of for the combination see how can we find out the current we are adding a resistance to it to how much resistance we need to add and what will be the voltage that also we need to find out okay so already um, ammeter has a range of 100 ohm with us so how much we need to add to that how can we find out so here r total how can we find out r total will be equal to capital r plus small r that is equal to uh, the, the total will be equal to current by uh, this voltage by current right so s yes, how we can find out shunt resistance will be equal to g divided by i by ig minus 1 okay uh, uh, in the which range so here how can we find out the range so here we can check whether the using this equation we can check whether the answers can be uh, uh, getting it in the given order. First one 50 volt range and 10 kilo ohm resistance in series. 50 volt range and 10 kilo ohm resistance. So R we can check it as R equals V by I. For that V is 50 volt. So 50 divided by current is 50 into 10 to the power minus 6. So here it is 1, 10 to the power 6. So here 10 kilo ohm only given, but it is 10 to the power 3 kilo ohm. Right? So that is wrong. This is wrong. Next is 10 volt, 200 kilo ohm resistance in series. 10 volt. Voltage is R equals V by I. V is given as 10 volt divided by I is i how much it is 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 so 1 by 5 0 0.2 0 0.2 into 10 to the power 
3 kilo ohm. So 10 to the power 0.2 into 10 to the power 3 is 200 kilo. Ah, yeah, that, this is correct. Second one is correct. 5 milliampere range with 1 ohm resistance in parallel. How can we find out here? The resistance S, how can we find out? 100 V divided by. So 100 ohm R by the resistance is ammeter has a resistance of 100 ohm it is given right so g divided by i by 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 ig minus 1 so while they are solving this is nearly equal to 5 milliampere only you will get so this also can be the answer so here both b and c are correct clear under uh, clear children i'll tell you once more a micro ammeter has a range of See here first I'll rub everything over here and then we'll explain here because it, it became crowded I guess. So here just yes, see a microammeter has a range of 100 ohm and a full scale range of 50 microampere. So here our resistance is microammeter has a resistance. Ammeter has a resistance of 100 ohm and a full scale range of 50 microampere. So current is 50 microampere it is given. Okay so now it can be used as a higher range ammeter or voltmeter provided resistance is added to it. Okay now we need to add resistance. Pick out the correct range we need to consider. So here voltage and resistance are given. So we can find out the resistance value for the given V by I. Given voltage is 50. For 50 volt and 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 my ampere, what is the resistance? We, we got it as it is 100,000 kilo ohm. But here it is 10 kilo ohm. So that option is wrong. Then now we are checking for the second option. There are equals V by I. V is given as 50, uh, 10 divided by 50 into 10 to the power minus 6. So here we got it as nearly equal to 200 kilo ohm only. So this can be the answer. But here an option is given for D. That is both B and C. So we need to check whether C is correct or not. There they had given a 5 milliampere range. So current is given as 5 milliampere, 5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Shunt resistance S equals, what is the formula for shunt resistance? S is equal to G divided by I by IG minus 1. So what is the value of G here? G is 100 ohm divided by I, I how much it is given? I see I value only we need to find out. I by IG is 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 minus 1. Shunt resistance value they are given it as 1 ohm. So while we are equating this we will be getting the values I as nearly equal to 5 milliampere only. So you need to check with the equations whether the options are correct or not. So here we will be getting B and C as the correct answer. Okay, so I don't think for NCRT this much of uh, uh, twisted questions they uh, will be asking. Uh, most probably they won't be asking uh, such twisted questions in the entrance level. No, they won't be asking, I guess. Okay, so we are moving to the next question, 10th one. A current carrying circular loop of radius R is placed in the XY plane with the center at the origin. Half of the loop with x greater than 0 is now bent so that it now lies in the yz plane. So the magnitude of magnetic moment now diminishes. The options are given like that and magnetic moment does not change. Magnitude of b at 0, 0, z and z is very much greater than r increases. The magnitude of b at 0, 0, 0, z, z is very much greater than r is unchanged. See, a current carrying circular loop of radius R is placed in the XY plane. Okay, then with the center at the origin, half of the loop with X greater than 0 is now bent so that now it lies in the YZ plane. So how can we find out the net magnetic field? First you need to find out the net magnetic field. M, uh, net magnetic field M equals 
m equals root of m square plus m square that is 2m square root 2m you will be getting magnetic moment we know it is ia you can substitute ia and from here a is pi r square and that is the formula and here you can substitute the respective values and here anyway you will be getting m net value will be less than capital m magnetic moment diminishes this is the correct answer uh, since it is root 2 into pi r square r by 2 the whole square we will be considering here so here it has been in the form of uh, now lies in a yz plane and the values is the magnetic moment now diminishes m is less than net magnetic moment will be diminishing so we'll move to the next question current carrying loop is placed in a uniform magnetic field the torque acting on it does not depend upon a current carrying uh, loop is placed in a uniform magnetic field its torque is, does not depend on what is the value of torque torque acting on the system how can we find out torque to equals m cross b that is m b sin theta m is equal to n i a b n i a into b sin theta so it is depending on area of the loop va value of current and it is depending on magnetic field it does not depend on shape so the correct answer is shape of the loop next one a circular coil of 50 tons and radius 7 cm is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 4 tesla normal to the plane of the coil if the current in the coil is 6 ampere then torque acting on the coil is so here also same formula we can substitute 2 equals m cross b m i a so n i a b sin theta n i a b sin theta for that here the values are given like Number of turns is 50 turns, radius is 7 cm, uniform, ha, here it is normal to the, that's 4 tesla is acting normal to the plane of the coil. It is acting, to the, uh, the, so area vector and the, uh, what is that, um, area vector and magnetic field are both are in the same direction, therefore we can take theta as equal to 0, so n m cross b m is a value which is depending on n i a so area vector and b you need to consider for the plane for the plane magnetic field is acting just perpendicular to the plane right so area vector also will be acting perpendicular to the plane so what will be the angle between area vector and b that is equal to zero therefore torque acting on the system is equal to zero here correct answer is zero next is the gyromagnetic ratio of an electron in a hydrogen atom according to Bohr model is. So, gyromagnetic uh, value, uh, ratio will be always in hydrogen atom it is negative and it will be independent of the orbit which electrons revolve around. So, it will be always negative. Gyromagnetic ratio of electron value will be negative and it is independent of which it is revolving. Okay, next question. The sensitivity of a moving coil galvanometer increases with a decrease in. Sensitivity, how it is depending? Sensitivity of, uh, what is the formula for finding out the sensitivity? Sensitivity equals NAB by K. This is uh, sensitivity. Sensitivity increases with a decrease in. Decrease in k value torsional rigidity k is torsional rigidity next is 15th question is a voltmeter range of 2 volt and resistance 300 ohm cannot be converted to an ammeter range so here how can we find out the uh, ammeter range ig ig we can find it out v by r 2 by 300 that is 1 by 150 1 by 150 it is in ohm 1 by 150 is equal to here how we will be getting into in milliampere we need to consider that it is voltmeter converted to an ammeter range of 
zero point zero zero six. So we will be getting here. So here it is one by one fifty is zero point zero zero six. So six point six. Uh, six 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 like that it will be going six point six 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 milli ampere. So here it is. The answer will be equal to fifth fifth one F five milli ampere. A is the correct answer. Okay. So voltmeter range of two volt and resistance three hundred ohm cannot be converted to an ammeter range of. So we cannot convert that to an ammeter range of five milli ampere because here we are getting it as six point six milli ampere. Okay, clear. So here, ah, uh, so initial questions and all bit difficult. It was so that kind of questions. I don't think it will be asking for you, ah, uh, because ah, uh, it's difficult only. Such difficult questions will will be coming in entrance purpose and all only. So I hope today's video is useful for you. And if you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching. Bye.